Hi, and welcome on uh, welcome to the next lecture part on logistic regression for binary classification. So, logistic regression is um, the first type of discriminant um, or risk minimization approach for classification that we are going to look at here. Um, it's a linear model um, for binary classification, um, and it uh, usually assumes that our labels are encoded with 0 and 1. And now, as before, as we have already covered for linear regression, um, it's also based on this um, super important principle of empirical risk minimization. So, what we are doing is, we are assuming we have a certain structure available, a certain functional form that models our posterior probabilities um, for a certain um, or for an arbitrary feature vector x. Yeah? So we have a functional, we have a function pi that depends on a parameter vector theta that takes an x and outputs a posterior probability. The next thing we're going to assume is that we have a loss function available, and this loss functions loss function measures now the discrepancy, the difference between a predicted probability and a true label encoded with 0 and 1. And now for our training data set, we will sum up all of these losses over all observations, where for each observation we predict the posterior probability, compare it through the loss function with the true label yi, yeah? then sum this all up and then minimize this with respect to our uh, parameter vector theta. And this is what we call the empirical risk uh, and this minimization principle, um, which is actually what um, machine learning is uh, mainly about, we call empirical risk minimization. Now, the main things we are actually missing to make this really work and to completely specify logistic regression are what is this specific functional form for pi of x and what is the loss function that we're going to consider. So let's start with the functional form of pi of x. So what we would like to do is we would like to not move too far away from a linear model. Uh, so we'd like to create something that feels like a linear regression model. So the first try could be let's just write down our posterior, the functional form for our posterior probabilities as a linear formula. So this could just be theta transpose times x. So this would really be a linear regression model. And um, again, as um, before, I'm now, uh, for many slides, I'm going to suppress now the intercept in notation. And this could actually work as a first try. But it obviously results in uh, predicted probabilities which are potentially completely outside of this um, zero one interval. Yeah? Uh, for example, consider making some of these features uh, super large or consider making some of them uh, super large negative values. Um, you can easily um, predict then outside of this interval, which means that we are not really modeling posterior probabilities very well, right? So I guess we could do this and then clip at the boundaries of the interval or do some other tricks, um, but this doesn't feel um, completely correct. So in order for us to um, still be able to stay with this um, linear um, functional form, we're just going to add a second um, component to it, to it um, which is called a sigmoid or logistic function. So instead of directly um, considering these created scores here as probabilities, we will squash them through um, the so-called logistic function. And the logistic function you can see in formula here, and you see its resulting graph here. So this is a function that's defined on the whole real line and that takes the whole real line 
and transforms this into values between 0 and 1 in, a, in an isotonic fashion. And this is exactly kind of what we want, right? So some type of score comes in. Negative values um, we kind of see as um, a preference for the negative class. Positive values we see as a preference for the uh, positive class. Um, they get transformed to something between 0 and 1. And scores get transformed in a isotonic fashion. Now, one question that one can, I guess, uh, very well ask is why are we using this specific function here? Wouldn't any type of S-shaped function work? Yes, it was. It would. For logistic regression, we are using this very specific type of formula here, but we could try it. We could actually define similar models um, with other S-shaped um, types of functions and then um, define um, Related models, we're not going to discuss this here any further, but um, let me keep it at, yes, this would in general work. Okay, maybe a little bit more intuition on, um, on this logistic function. So one thing we could actually consider is what happens if in this numerical score here, we kind of vary this um, intercept term. And what happens then is that we're kind of shifting this logistic function to the left and to the right. Um, it's not very surprising. Um, or we can consider what happens if we multiply this um, inner score f here, this linear score with a scaling factor alpha. Um, so as long as alpha is positive, um, we would make this slope here steeper or less steep. And if alpha becomes negative, yeah, we kind of even flip around um, the whole um, logistic function um, at this um, vertical axis here. Okay, that was um, our hypothesis space. So our hypothesis space for logistic regression is now consisting of all functions of this type of S of something linear in the features. What type of loss are we now using? So what we could actually do is just define something like a quadratic loss um, that would be possible. I don't want to go into the details here why we are not doing that. So historically and traditionally, we uh, will use a function that looks like this. So um, we'll encode our labels, our true labels with 0 and 1. And then we will have uh, a loss function that is minus label times log of the predicted probability minus the counter label, anti-label, 1 minus y. Yeah? So this turns 1s into zeros and zeros into 1s times log of the counter probability. Yeah? So this is the probability for class 0, while this is the probability for class 1. Um, I guess you can also notice that um, this um, if you look at this loss definition here, for each observation, uh, y must either, either be 0 or 1. So only one of these two terms actually will be active and the other will be 0. Um, where does this formula come from? So it's possible to derive this formula actually from the negative log likelihood of a Bernoulli model. Um, that's typically used in statistics. I don't want to do this here. Um, what I want to do is kind of introduce this visually. And because of this, I have plotted um, the visual structure of this um, so-called uh, Bernoulli loss or log loss here. And we have plotted this um, yeah, for, for the two different cases, one where um, our true class y is zero and then only this term is actually active and the, for the second case where y is one and then only this case is active. And you can see that both functions uh, look like um, um, mirrored versions of each other. It's not very surprising if you look at the structure of the formula. And what you can also see is that, so you consider the case where y is 1, that if y is 1, we can see that um, in this area here, uh, right to the point where um, our posterior 
probability is 0.5 to the right of that, we would always predict, we usually predict our class um, as positive, right? And as our class really is, is positive, in this area here, we wouldn't do a classification mistake, we wouldn't do a classification error. And the incurred loss is then pretty small. And to the left of this region here of pi equals uh, 0.5, we would actually do the wrong prediction. The loss um, goes up in an exponential uh, manner. And this um, means the following. So as long as we are correct, uh, loss is pretty small, but the more confident we become for an incorrect classification. Yeah? So for example, here, our class is still positive, but we are predicting it to be negative with a super high um, or yeah, with, a, with a super high confidence. So with a posterior probability that is very, very close to zero. Yeah? So in these cases here, we are confidently wrong and in these cases, we penalize um, these predictions heavily through our loss function. And the same thing kind of happens vice versa um, for this case here, for our, where our true level is zero. And this Bernoulli loss, sometimes called log loss, sometimes called cross entropy loss, because you can also introduce this from an uh, information theoretic perspective, is used in very many um, different classification techniques in machine learning. So it's used heavily in neural networks um, and also in boosting. Um, a few examples. Um, so this is a super simple case with um, a data set with just one feature, just one real valued features feature where you can see how the resulting estimated um, S-shaped curve of our logistic regression model looks like. And here is uh, an example for a 2D data set with two features, x1 and x2, two classes. We estimate our logistic regression and you can see here the resulting decision regions and the resulting decision boundary. And you can see from the picture that this looks um, very much like a separating hyperplane and it also very much looks like, um, yeah, this is a linear classifier therefore. Mm, and you can also easily see this from our formula. We have defined a linear classifier as um, something where you can write the score function as something that's linear up to any monotonous um, isotonic um, transformation. And this S is an isotonic transformation. Yeah? So we can kind of peel that off and um, we just um, keep this inner linear term here and can directly see from the functional form from the hypothesis space of all logistic regression that this must be a linear classifier and therefore all separating hyperplanes will be of linear structure. And we can't model anything else with the basic model on the original feature space. Um, yeah, here's, a, here's some further visualizations of this 2D case, which might be interesting. So here I've uh, visualized um, on the two um, original input features, X1 and X2, I've visualized how this um, probability surface of pi of x looks like. And what you can also see here is that the probability surface only changes in this direction, yeah, on, the, on this um, diagonal direction, um, which comes from this um, yeah, um, scalar multiplication from this scalar product where we basically um, project onto this onto this um, direction here. Yeah? And you could also kind of now do this computation in two steps. So the first would be this projection, this score computation. And then here in the second plot, you can see how the score is transformed in a univariate fashion yeah, by being squashed through this S function and turned into a probability. So to um, summarize things and wrap everything up, here we have our hypothesis space. So it's all linear functions squashed through the logistic um, through the logistic function s. Our risk function is the 
logistic loss function, yeah, specified by this formula that we, that we also covered. What we haven't really covered is how do we actually optimize the empirical risk of a logistic regression model. Um, what we cannot do um, as for linear regression with the L2 loss, uh, we cannot analytically solve this um, anymore, but we've already also seen this for linear regression with uh, L1 loss. Um, in, this cases, in these cases, we have to uh, refer to numerical optimization, typically something gradient-based, and then we'll just numerically, um, algorithmically optimize this loss um, until we have um, arrived at our optimal loss or risk minimizing um, parameter vector theta star.